How does that saying go? Nothing can be certain except death, taxes, and temperature. Hmm, that doesn't sound exactly right. But it is true that temperature monitoring is unavoidable for most of our designs today. And sometimes, especially in an industrial setting, temperatures might be ranging from something like 270 to 3,000 degrees Celsius. Might as well put away that oven thermometer, huh? <laughs> oh, it melted already. Cool. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Throw away that chunk of molten metal and let's talk about thermocouples. Sounds kind of like a sci-fi buddy movie, doesn't it? Well, my guest today is Azana Hale from Microchip, and we're going to talk about how to correctly measure and monitor temperature in industrial applications with some help from thermocouples. All right, let's get started. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about Microchip's thermal couple temperature sensor solutions. Hi, Azana. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Thank you for inviting me. I've been watching your videos, and I'm very excited to be here with you. Excellent. I love to hear that. Okay, so we're talking about thermal couple temperature solutions today. But Azana, before we jump into the details, for my audience who may not know, what exactly is a thermal couple temperature solution? Thermal couple is an industrial grade temperature sensor. It's available in various connector types for various applications. And it's very rugged temperature sensor. It's used in uh, harsh environments, extreme temperatures. The operating temperature range is also very wide from minus 270 degrees to up to 3000 degrees. And some thermocouples can go even higher than 3000 degrees. But for most common industry applications, thermocouples are available up to 3000 degrees. So a typical application for these types of thermocouples are really industrial applications. You see them in industrial ovens, boilers, furnace. We're talking about large furnace. And on 3D printers as well, the extruders are maintained with a thermocouple for a high-end 3D printers. You see those kilns, smelters, all of those use thermocouples like at higher temperature. Usually that's either that or a resistive temperature detector or RTDs are used. But uh, RTD has a temperature limit of about 600 degrees. And anything above 600 degrees, thermocouples are utilized. In the automotive industry, thermocouples being utilized in engines, exhaust systems, motors, gigantic, huge motors for industrial applications or automotive aerospace applications. Also in the petrochemical industry, because of the rugged nature of this temperature sensor, it withstands harsh chemicals very well, or high pressure application or high vibration applications as well. For consumer application, you see them in refrigerators, freezers as well, and water heaters as well. So if you, you know, the 40 gallon water heater you have at home, it's got a nice long thermocouple in there, measures the water heater temperature. Thermocouples are used for food pros for their fast thermal response characteristics. Those are the typical applications for a thermocouple. Okay, that totally makes sense. But Azana, how exactly do these work? Thermocouples are really unique temperature sensing devices. The key element about the thermocouple is that there are two dissimilar wires, metal alloys, for example, chromel and alumel, iron and constantine, chromel and constantine, some combination of these various alloys. When you join them, when you have a point of contact for the two wires and heat is applied, what happens is the electrical characteristics of the resistive element and excited electrons generates voltage. And that voltage can be measured at the opposite end on the open wire end. And those two points are called hot junction and cold junction points. The point of contact for the two wires is the point where the thermocouple is placed into the harsh environment or high temperature environment. Whereas the cold junction is the junction where the measurement is being conducted, and that is usually at room temperature. And basically, the sum of the temperature at cold junction and the hot junction gives you any absolute temperature reading. The voltage that's measured is called the Seebeck effect or electromotive force. As you can see, thermocouples don't need any excitation current or voltage or supply or anything like that, they are self-contained and they may generate the voltage proportional to changes in temperature. So that's how they operate. 
Okay, so what kind of solutions would you suggest in this space? Now, I would imagine that I have a lot of options, especially when it comes to the materials themselves. Yeah, thermocouples are available in various types. There are several materials depending on the temperature range and linear characteristics that the application requires. So in this case, I have a table on the right side of the presentation. And as you can see on the table, the most common thermocouples as top three are type T, J, and K. Those are just typical names used to identify these different types of thermocouples. And the rest of them are somewhat specialty. And you can see the temperature range and it's, you know, what, how wide the ranges are for each thermocouples. And they provide different, like I said, linear characteristics for the sweet spots of sensitivity. And the key thing to look at is on the right side of the table, there's a voltage range. And as you can see, the EMF or electromotive force or the Seebeck effect is measured in the units of millivolt. For a type D thermocouple, minus 6 to 20 millivolt is uh, the range. That's very, very small. Type K goes from minus 6 to 54 millivolt. And so as you can see, you can go on and on and you can notice that the voltage range is very, very small. So if you need a one degree resolution, that would be very difficult to achieve. So there's a compromise between sensitivity or range and resolution in the application. But you know, when you're considering a thermocouple solution, clearly the first thing that comes is analog instrumentation. And with the high gain, typically instrumentation amplifiers are used, and that's the right way to go for a lot of applications. But say you have a gain of 100, then the range is going to be limited. And so you have to compromise between the range and the resolution you need for the temperature. Some applications use precision delta sigma ADCs, high resolution delta sigma ADCs, and those are very useful. They can be costly in some cases. You'll need low tolerance resistors and capacitors. And scaling and error nailing is also a necessary circuit requirement. And temperature calibration is also needed. Obviously, you need to know where your reference temperature is and calibrate your circuit to that. And another key element, as I mentioned in the previous slide, is knowing what your cold junction temperature is, because that is your reference temperature to accurately know what the absolute temperature is. All of these are components needed to build a thermocouple electronic solution. So say I decide on a thermal couple solution for my next design. Azana, what kind of circuits should I consider? There are several solutions, but the most typical solution, as I mentioned in the previous slide, is instrumentation amplifiers. But you'd have to consider the cost of the instrumentation amplifier, as well as the integrated A to D converter. You would have to digitize your signal accordingly for data logging purposes or to turn on a switch, whatever the application requires, right? And a cold junction compensation temperature sensor is also needed. So if you look at the bottom slide, you have the thermocouple in one end on the left side of the slide, right, with the extreme temperature. It's signified by a red mark, and you have the cold junction. On the bottom side, you have the temperature sensor, a little yellow dot. That measures your overall ambient temperature at the cold junction. And on the right side, you have the instrumentation amplifier, and you do have a trim gain or a gain adjustment network. So these are really the basic building blocks for thermocouples. In both cases, for the temperature sensor, you have voltage output, and for the thermocouple, there's a voltage output as well. So in a digital domain, you can do the summing and calculation and linearization. Now, as you look at the circuit, the key things one would have to consider when building a thermocouple solution, precision instrumentation, is high impedance input. Also, low noise is required, low offset voltage, and low gain nonlinearity was also a must. A microchip, we have several analog solutions for digitizing a thermocouple. I suggest visiting the microchip.com slash analog for a list of components that one could use to build a thermocouple solution. Cool. I'll do just that. Now, Izana, tell me more about what microchip specifically offers in this space. We at Microchip have developed an integrated thermocouple solution. Basically, all the circuit design requirement embedded system designers will have to develop is eliminated with a device that we might offer at microchip.com. At microchip, we have the MCP9600 and 9601 family of thermocouple converters. 
basically it integrates all the cold junction compensation, all the errors that we talked about in the previous slide, all of that is combined in a single canned solution and the device linearizes all of that and outputs temperature in degrees Celsius. And this device supports standard thermocouple types that I mentioned to you in a previous slide on the table, types K, J, T, all the standard and non-standard thermocouples, up to eight of them. All you have to do is select it within the device as to what type of thermocouple has been connected to it. It's got a nice core C interface and various user programmable features. It also has an open and short circuit detection for alert outputs. One of the key things that happens in the thermocouple applications is wires corrode and break over time. And the device obviously would not know that something has happened to the thermocouple. So in the application, when wire breaks, system designers do want to know immediately whether the thermocouple is in good shape or not. And so this device has open and short circuit detection features. Because the thermocouple is a long wire, when it touches like chassis ground or accidentally touches supply voltage, that creates a short condition in the system and the device has the capability to alert for that as well. There are multiple programmable features, like multiple power saving features for a battery powered application. It has four dedicated temperature alert outputs as well, a digital filter. So there are a number of features with this device. It's available in a five millimeter by five millimeter QFN package. As you can see on the top right, the MCP9600 thermocouple directly connects to it, and it's got ice core C output, and that's it. There's nothing else. The MCP9601 adds the open and short detection, which is in the bottom of the diagram. That's really the only difference between the two. Other than that, they're both identical. And I have a table on the bottom here that differentiates them as well. So the MCP9601 and 100 are available in one and a half degrees C accurate. Just imagine you're a thousand degrees and you're able to measure temperature at one and a half degrees C accuracy. It's uh, outstanding. And then there's some applications don't need that. So there's a four degree accurate version, the MCP96L01. And then the very low accuracy version, also the plus or minus eight degrees C version, MCP96RL01. And this is applicable for low cost applications that do not require high accuracy. And the only difference, as I mentioned to you, between the two is the open short detection mechanism. 9601 has it, and the 9600 doesn't have that feature. Okay, cool. So, Azana, what exactly does this solution offer me as an engineer? As an embedded system designer, the key thing is that this device reduces the required engineering effort. So you don't need analog or mixed signal design expertise or thermal management design expertise. Everything is canned. It's a plug and play solution. It has a lot of uh, integrated features. So it simplifies firmware development. The key difference between the thermocouple types is that they're all nonlinear. The nonlinear characteristics of each of these thermocouple types is significantly different. They provide linear region at different temperatures. So what this device does is, regardless of what your application is, connect whatever thermocouple you want, and it linearizes it and gives you one and a half degrees heat maximum accuracy performance. So therefore, the overall system accuracy is improved, and it's the optimum solution for a thermocouple. On the right side here in this diagram, I have a block diagram of the various features that is available in the device. You can see this hot junction temperature and a cold junction temperature characteristics or values are embedded in the device. And there's a status register in there, sensor configuration, and there are a lot of user programmable features that are very useful for embedded system applications. I can definitely see that. So, Azana, I would imagine that temperature accuracy would also play an important role here. What does that look like? Temperature accuracy is at the heart of thermocouple design. Higher end application, as I mentioned to you, do require higher accuracy. So we're offered plus or minus one and a half degree. And lower accuracy devices, applications, you know, require lower cost solutions. That's what 96L00 and RL00 versions are for. On the right side of the slide, I have a table of temperature specification. And as you can see, the temperature range for each thermocouple type and the voltage range, as well as the accuracies provided for the delta junction, which is right here. 
This device, the one and a half degree C accuracy version, is able to decode temperature accurately to plus or minus a half degree C accuracy. Again, it's very, very superior performance. And here's a typical plot of how that accuracy ranges across the temperature range of minus 200 to approximately 1300 degrees. So X axis, as you can see for a K type, is minus 200 to almost 1300 degrees. And as a Y axis, you can see that's the temperature accuracy. The typical performance is well within the plus or minus quarter degree C accuracy range for a type K. Typically, it's within quarter degree C. The min max is plus or minus half a degree C. But the cold junction temperature sensor for this device is plus or minus one degree accurate. So that's shown right here. That's for zero to 85 degrees Celsius. So the delta temperature plus the cold junction temperature give you the overall accuracy of plus or minus one and a half degrees just shown right here. Does that make sense? This is how we reach the one and a half degree C accuracy. Absolutely. And this accuracy performance, as I mentioned to you, is factory calibrated. So out of the box, you get one and a half degree C accuracy. So no calibration is required. It's simply plug and play. Now, there are additional options with the thermocouple, and you can improve your sensitivity or performance by adding the open and short detection. Now, one of the things we do recommend for this device is adding optional resistors and diodes and protection ferrite beads and RC filter. All of these components increase the overall performance. So for open and short circuit detection, to utilize the open and short detection with dedicated alert outputs, we recommend using three biasing resistors, and those are designated as uh, RA and RB in a dotted line box around the circuit that we have. And the circuit is also in the data sheet, so you can reference to it directly. As you can see for 9601, there is a direct connect for vSense. Basically, what that does is that takes a sample of the common motor voltage for the thermocouple. And based on that voltage level decides whether thermocouple is connected or not. We also recommend a high frequency noise or EMI suppression. Ferrite beads or series inductors can be used as well. And see that here. We also recommend ESD protection diodes. Now the MCP9600 has integrated ESD protection diodes, but we do recommend having external protection diodes. And again, additionally, we recommend adding an external RC filter at the input. That's the RC and C resistors you see at the input stage that provides additional stability. Okay, cool. Now, if I want to get started with a thermocouple solution, what can you guys do for me here? We do have an evaluation board for the MCP9600 or 9601. The, that evaluation board is called the MCP9600 EV and it's readily available. This evaluation board allows you to evaluate the various features that are available within this device. The board comes with a graphical user interface, GUI, and as you can see, it's kind of an eye chart here, but all of the user features are available here. Now, going on to the next slide and zoom in a little bit on the GUI, you can see the various features that are available with this device. I'm gonna start with the top right corner, so the three temperature registers, the hot junction, temperature delta, and cold junction temperatures, all three of them are available in this GUI. So you can measure and experiment with the device characteristics. We also have the thermocouple voltage, or VEMF, which is also available in the EMF register. Basically, the conversion unit is approximately 2 microvolt per LSV. And that turns out to be about 0 0.05 degrees C, typical resolution for type K thermocouple. There's also a status register, which shows you what uh, alert statuses are. Temperature alert conditions can be detected by reading the status register, as well as reading the status of the alert outputs. There is also a configuration register, which allows you to set the thermocouple type or uh, utilize the built-in digital filters that we have in this device. There's also various power saving modes, shut down and normal operating mode. Also, there's a burst mode as well. So if you are in a shutdown mode, a power saving mode, and you want to take multiple samples, you can send an I2C command to the device. It will take samples. Each of those samples check for alert conditions, and then it goes back to sleep. So that's a great tool for battery powered applications can adjust the measurement resolution as well. So one of the key features here in this GUI is you can easily select 
the thermocouple type and see the different characteristics as well. Going on to the next slide, I want to spend a little time showing you a little bit about the programmable digital filter feature we have in the Spark. It uses the Infinite Impulse Response or IIR digital filter, or sometimes called the Exponential Moving Average. This IIR filter uses the current and the previous temperature samples to come up with the next temperature sample. It's just a simplified filter mechanism compared to having to take multiple samples and taking the average or running average of multiple samples. So IIR is a simple filter mechanism and it provides a nice step response to changes in temperature. Now here I have a graphical demonstration of how the filter operates. As you can see, the top green arrow shows you that when the filter is off, temperature sample is very bouncy by approximately about 100 degrees Celsius. And then here in the second one, when the filter is at a mid-level, you can see that bounciness is somewhat quiets down here. If you set it to a maximum filter, you can see how nice and smooth it is. It still tracks the changes in temperature, but it's pretty smooth response in terms of jitter. And finally, I have the alert function. It really has very rich features. You can set, uh, there are four dedicated alert outputs in this case, right? So each of those alert outputs can be dedicated to detect the hot junction, which could be in a thousand degree range, or the cold junction, which should be at 25 degrees or 50 degrees. Uh, you can set which temperature you want to detect. You can also detect a uh, rising temperature or falling temperature. So that's useful. You can have one of the alert to detect a rising temperature, say 800 degree. And the other temperature can detect a falling temperature at, say, 700 degree. So you can have a temperature window, program this device to be a temperature window for 6 to 700 degree range, either as temperature rises or temperature falls. The alert polarity can also be adjusted as an active high or active low. Some applications do care about that. And there's also a comparator mode and interrupt mode. So the comparator mode, you can think of it as a thermostat comes on and it comes off when temperature rises and drops. In the interrupt mode, when each of those temperature thresholds are crossed, the device asserts an interrupt and the host controller will have to clear that interrupt at appropriate time to service the changes in temperature. Excellent. This was super cool, Azana. Can you walk me through your main points? So I have a short summary for you here. So Thermocouple temperature sensors are used in various applications, right? High temperature and extreme temperature environments in industrial, automotive, aerospace, petrochemical, and oil and gas, and consumer applications. We talked about all of those. These are the key areas where thermocouples are utilized. And Microchip provides the MCP9600 and 9601 thermocouple solution, right? Which is a plug and play solution for thermocouples. It simplifies the design effort and better system designers spend less time worrying about their thermocouple designs. This supports all industry standard thermocouples, and it provides overall system accuracy for the embedded system in various applications. Excellent. Well, this was super cool. Thank you so much for joining me, Azana. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much for having me, Amelia. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about Microchip's Thermal Couple Temperature Sensor Solutions. For Chalk Talk, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.